Hey there, I'm Goli Kalkaran, and this is Lessons from a Quitter, where we believe that it's never too late to start over. No matter how much time or money you've spent getting to where you are, if ultimately you are not happy, then it's time to get out. If you're feeling stuck and you feel like there's got to be more, there's got to be a way to feel fulfilled and excited about what you do, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, I will sit down with an inspiring guest who quit their professional career in order to forge their own path and create a life that they love. Hey guys, it's Goli here. First, I wanted to just thank you for tuning into the podcast. I hope you find something in the coming episodes and the interviews, whether it's inspiration or practical resources and steps that can help you. But before we get into the show, I wanted to take some time to introduce myself and give a little bit of background about myself and why I'm doing this, why I created Lessons from a Quitter and what I hope to achieve with it. A little background about me. In 2008, I got my law degree from UC Berkeley. And up until that point, I had always wanted to be a lawyer. I was one of those weird children that from like nine or 10 years old had started saying that I wanted to be a lawyer. I'm not sure why. And that sort of stuck. And the journey that I went on until I became a lawyer was a path that was laid out. It was a path that was not easy, but it was simple. You know, I knew what classes I had to take and what tests I had to take and what grades I had to get. And, you know, I knew what the dance was. And so I did it. And I was lucky enough that I was good in school and I was good at taking tests. And so it sort of came easy to me. I put in the work, but I got good grades. I went to college. I took the LSAT. I got into a great school and I went to law school. And I actually loved law school. I still find the law very fascinating. I loved learning about it. But the problem sort of came about once I became a lawyer. I think up until that point, I never really understood, like a lot of people that become lawyers, what being a lawyer actually meant. I didn't have lawyers around me when I was growing up. I didn't really understand what the day-to-day, you know, besides seeing them on TV, I didn't understand what the day-to-day was. And so I was lucky enough to get a great job out of law school at a big law firm, and I was making a ton of money it's sort of very easy to get stuck in that position. You are young, you have a lot of money, and you think like, well, this is what I work towards. And, you know, by society standards, you're quote unquote successful. And so you feel like you should just continue down that road, whether you like it or not, whether you're working insane amount of hours, whether, you know, physically your health is suffering for it, it doesn't matter. It becomes a part of your identity. You've been working towards it for years and years and years, and that's what you should do. And that's what I did. And I was sort of, I mean, I don't know if the word is lucky, but for me, like going into the big law firm, I knew that would never be a long lasting gig. I had always gone to law school to work with social justice causes, whether it was going to be a public interest lawyer, you know, or or working for the government or whatnot. And so I went to a law firm to get some experience, but also to pay off my debt. I figured if I lived at home and I used all that money to pay off my debt, then it would open me up to a lot more opportunities. I didn't have to worry about this like crushing debt. And, you know, it turned out to be a smart move, but I think I was lucky in that sense that I knew I wasn't going to get sucked into the big law firm life that I could leave. And so I was sort of kind of assuming that I would be miserable there because I knew that wasn't the type of law I wanted to do. And I wasn't happy with the work. And even though I loved the law firm and I loved the people I work with, I didn't like the work. I didn't last that long. I lasted less than two years. And once I quit, I moved to Arizona, and I became a federal public defender. And at that time, I thought, this is it. This is going to be, you know, the job that I have for the rest of my career, and I'm going to love it. And it's, you know, it was working with the death penalty, which was a cause I was very passionate about. And I felt like this was my calling. And that's when the rude awakening happened, when I started doing that job, and I realized, God, I really hate this too. And there was, you know, a lot of things factors that played into that. But one of the main ones is that when you broke it down, I didn't like doing legal work. I'm a very sociable, outgoing person. And the work that I was doing required me to be in an office by myself for an unreasonable amount of hours every day, nights, weekends, just writing these very large briefs. I would, you know, 500 page briefs and 200 page responses, and it would just be months on end of writing. And I would, I was just so unhappy doing it. And there was parts of the job that I liked, but overall, I wasn't very happy. The funny thing though, is that when with the legal profession, and I think with other professions, now looking back, it seems a little bit crazy, but 
it was very common for lawyers not to be happy. So you don't really bat an eye. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, you're miserable. We're all miserable. So what? Just keep doing it. And I never even considered it a possibility that I could just not work as a lawyer. I had worked so hard for so long to get to that point. And now I was a lawyer. And being a lawyer was so intertwined in my identity. I didn't know who I was apart from being a lawyer. I really felt like this is what I have to do. Okay, I hate it, but you're just going to have to keep plugging along and maybe you can find a different job, but this is what it is. And so I continued working as a federal public defender for four years. And then I had my son in 2014 and it coincided with us moving back from Arizona to California. And that provided a good opportunity for me to take some time off and be at home with my son and find a new job in California. And so when we moved, I was so relieved that I got to have some time at home. And a big part of it was obviously I wanted to be with my son, but honestly, deep down, it was because I didn't want to be working as a lawyer. And I felt like, okay, I get a break. And when my son was a couple months old, like four or five months, I started looking for work again as a lawyer. And I remember reading these job descriptions that I, you know, wanted to apply for. And I would get this nauseous feeling and I would have this pit in my stomach. And that should have been a sign when you physically become ill at the thought of what you're going to do. But honestly, even then I didn't think that I could not do it. I just kind of pushed past the nausea and would apply for these jobs. And I remember talking to my husband at the time about it. And he was like, well, if you don't like it, then, you know, don't do it. Try to find something else. And I remember rolling my eyes and being like, what do you mean do something else? I'm a lawyer. This is what I'm going to do. I can't just not do it. It was so preposterous that he would even mention me trying to do something other than law. And he kept pushing me, God bless him, to think outside the box. And I remember him saying like, think outside the box. And I'd be like, what does that mean? What box are we talking about? I'm a lawyer. This is what I have to do. And I, again, like, thank God for him because he kept pushing me to consider other things. And, you know, I would kind of scoff at it, but deep down it planted a seed. And I kept thinking, could I do something else? Is it possible for me not to do this? And that is when I started thinking about the possibility. But there were so many things that were blocking me at the time. Like one was I literally thought that I had no other skills or interest. I mean, I had worked for so long to be a lawyer and it was, like I said, I mean, that was my identity. And it wasn't like I was one of these people who was a photographer or a chef and I put that aside to go to law school. And so that's my natural, what I would do if I didn't do law. I didn't have anything like that. I didn't, I literally didn't feel like I had any other interest. So when I was thinking about it, it was so scary because I was like, I literally don't know what I would do. And I don't think I have any other skills, which looking back is a little bit crazy because obviously I gained a lot of skills going through law school and that could be used in different fields. But at the time, I didn't think that it was a possibility. I started thinking about it a little bit more and more. I started looking at what is it that I would do? And that's where I came up to the second problem. I think when you are used to achieving things, you know, and used to, again, like society standards of success, you want to figure things out and start working towards it immediately. You know, I didn't have any patience. I wanted to figure out what I'm going to do next and start working at it and become successful now. And it took a long time for me to strip back and really realize that this is a whole process and it takes a really long time. And it's always evolving. You're not going to be the same person. So what I like now, in five years, I may not like it. In 10 years, I may not like it. You know, I'm going to keep changing. And so you have to really start giving yourself that space to be in tune with what is it like now? What's interests you? Like, what do you want to try? And be open to that. But I think being in traditional professions and traditional roles, that's a very difficult thing to accept because for so long you've been told this is what you're going to do and then you do it and then that's it. You just keep doing it. You don't keep evolving. You don't keep looking at different avenues. So that was one problem was what was I going to do? And another big problem for me personally was what will people think? I am a habitual people pleaser to a fault. I worry about what people think about me and it was really hard to learn to let that go. And I remember again, my husband when I was telling him about these fears of like, what am I going to tell people when they ask me what I do? He was saying, do you know how crazy it sounds that you want to work for the next 30 or 35 years in a job you hate so that you don't have to tell people that you're not a lawyer anymore? And obviously when you put it like that, it does sound insane, but we tend not to look at our life as like 
the future. You look at like right now, what do I have to do? And I felt so uncomfortable when people would ask me, are you practicing anymore? Or are you going to go back to work? And I didn't know how to answer that. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say, what I'm going to do. Like, am I a stay-at-home mom? Which is fine. Is that what I want to do? Do I want to try something else? Am I just going to pick something randomly and do it? And so I felt very lost and I felt very debilitated by what I would tell people. But I decided that, you know what, my happiness is worth more than the embarrassment or the humiliation or whatever I thought I was going to feel. And it turns out some people cared, but I wasn't the center of other people's universes. And even if they cared for a second, they moved on and I moved on and it was fine. And the earth didn't swallow me whole. So it was okay. So over the months and a lot of discussions with my husband about this, I started thinking maybe there is something else. Maybe I could do something else, but what is it? And that took me on this year-long journey of figuring out what is it that I like, stripping back everything I'd programmed myself for so many years and trying to strip myself away from this identity that I'd built. Through that time, I I started getting involved in a lot of groups in, in my city and I started going to different meetup events, like things that I never even thought that I would be interested in just to see. And it was so strange to me that things that I didn't think I would like, I ended up loving and meeting with people. And and it was uncomfortable. And there was times when I'd be at networking events and people would ask me what I do. And I had no business being there. And I'd be like, "Mm, I'm just here to meet people. It was weird. And it was very uncomfortable. But I'm so glad I did it. Because through that process, I started really figuring out just little things like, oh, I like interacting with people. I like doing jobs where I have a lot of face-to-face with different people. And so what what kind of jobs or careers or options does that open me up to? And I remember at the time I started going to these tech startup events, which I mean, if you know me, you know that it's literally the opposite. I'm the least tech savvy person. I knew nothing about technology before and I never thought I would like this stuff. And I loved these meetups. I was so interested and I was so engaged and it was so nice to go to networking events that weren't loyally networking events because people were happy. When I was at this place and I would see people so passionate about what they're doing and so in love with the startup that they're working at. And I was like, oh my God, you can like your work that much. I never even knew that was possible. It was contagious and I wanted to be around it. So I started going to more tech events and that's how I started uh, developing this business that I started, which really doesn't have much to do with this podcast, but I started a company called Ussie Booth. If you want to check it out, feel free. It's U-S-I-E booth.com. But in that process, I learned so many things. You know, I found industrial designers and I developed a product. I figured out the manufacturing and I developed software. I brought a product to market. I set up a company. I did marketing and sales, started renting them out and leasing them out and selling them and dealing with retail spaces. And it was just all so exciting. And I learned so much in the last year or two on this project. But one of the biggest lessons I think in this whole process for me is that I would see these people at the startup events and I would ask them what they were doing and they were telling me about their startup. And then they would tell me about like other startups that they had worked at and when they, how they got to where they are. And it was so funny because people in business, you can work in one business and then it doesn't work, let's say, or you leave and you go to a completely different, like you're working in retail and then now you're you know running a restaurant or whatever. And I remember thinking the freedom that they had. How cool is that? That you can work in a retail space and then now you're making AI. And nobody blinked an eye. It's the fact that, wait, how are you bringing those skills and whatnot? And I I felt like such freedom that even if I do this photo booth and let's say it works or it doesn't work or I, you know whatever happens with this company, in five years, I could be doing something totally different. And it was such a liberating feeling. It was such a thing that I don't have to say like, what I'm going to do for the next 35 years. I can let myself evolve as we do in my 30s. I'm going to be a different person than I am in my 40s. And I can sort of figure out as I go along and reevaluate and be on this journey to figure out what it is I want to do all the time and change it. There's not going to be a destination where you get to and you're a success. Like, that's it. So in that process, I started this business. But I also started just opening myself up and giving myself space to learn about so many things and read books and a lot of different fields and go to these different meetings. And what's funny is that you totally open up how you view the world. For I was viewing it through a different lens and I didn't really notice a lot of things. You know, I would do my job and I would notice things that pertain to my job. But otherwise, you're kind of sleepwalking through life. You get up, you go to work, you come back, you watch TV, you go to sleep. I, I wasn't thinking about anything else. And now I'm constantly so intrigued about how people are starting their businesses and different types of businesses and different opportunities. And I look at different things as, oh, what could I do with that? Or I like this. And I 
I never considered myself a creative person. And I've started so many creative endeavors. I mean, this podcast being one, it's like this passion project for me that I've wanted to start for two years. And I want to talk to really interesting people. And, and I'm sort of doing it because I'm giving myself the opportunity and the space to try things and fail and do different things and see what I like and see what sticks and see uh, where I want to be. And it's terrifying, but it's also so liberating because I'm not kind of putting myself in this box and saying like, I have to do this for the rest of my life. That brings me to why I wanted to start this podcast. Because in the last couple of years, while I was going on this journey, I also was out and about talking to people. And and I felt, like I said, I mean, so embarrassed a lot of times to tell people I'm not a lawyer. But the funny thing about it is that everywhere I would go, every party I would go to, when I would talk to people, they would express like how miserable they are. And they would ask me, oh my God, how did you leave? Oh, you're so lucky. How did you develop this product or whatnot? I wasn't surprised, I have to say. I was surprised by the number of people that would kind of confide in me about how miserable they were. But like I said, when I was a lawyer, it's sort of a given that, I don't know, eight out of 10 lawyers that you meet are going to be unhappy in what they do. And so I was used to people not being happy as lawyers. But I started meeting doctors and dentists and all these people that spent a ton of time uh, and money getting to where they wanted to be. And then they hated it and they felt stuck you know, when you're on the other side of it, it seemed so crazy to me that they would stay in it. I would think, well, quit. I mean, if you don't like it, then stop doing it. You don't get that much time on this earth. You only get one shot. You know, there's no dress rehearsal here. So this is it. You shouldn't be living something where day to day you hate what you're doing. You should figure out what it is that you like. And I understand there's people in these types of professions. We tend to be risk averse. We tend to be very practical. We tend to be logical. And so a lot of we dismiss these woo-woo, self-help, do what you love. And I get it. I'm not saying that every day of your life is going to be bliss and you should only do things that bring you joy. You have to make money. I understand that. But I'm really seeing a lot of people now that love what they do. And I think in this day and age, it's very different than what 10 years ago, 20 years ago, our parents' generations. Because back then, maybe there weren't a lot of options to have a stable life or to make money. You kind of had to go the traditional route. But today with the internet, there are so many ways to make money. And I really hope with this podcast, I can show you how many other things that you can parlay your skills into doing so that you can start doing things that you like, or maybe you can do things that make you money. So then you have time to do things that you like, and you don't have to stay in a job that you're miserable in. That's sort of the point of this podcast. I'm so sad to see so many people that are so miserable. You know, when I talk to people, I just want to shake them and be like, just start figuring out what it is. You don't have to quit today, but you got to start figuring out what it is you like. Because in 10 years, you're going to look back and think, I wish I had stopped 10 years ago. When you start looking at your life, the amount of time that you have to work, one of the things I started looking was I'm, you know, at the time when I was doing this, I was 32. I'm now 36. And I was thinking, I have 30 or 35 or 40 years left of working. And the amount that I hated at the time, I mean, the thought of doing it for 35 years literally made me feel sick. That is a good indication that you probably shouldn't be doing it. And so I started thinking, if I don't like it this much, then I don't want to look back when I'm 45 and think, God, I wish I started when I was 35. I wish I'd started something else, just anything, even on the side, even as a hobby to get me out of like doing something I hate. And so that's really my wish for you. I want you to open your mind to the possibility that it is possible to figure out something else. It's possible to quit. I understand that you've spent a lot of time and money and energy getting there. And I understand that your family or spouse or a lot of people are going to give you flack for wanting to do something else. But it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist or an accountant or you know a teacher or whatever you are. If you don't like what you're doing, there are so many things that you could be doing. And I might hope for you is to maybe get some inspiration and to get resources. I want to help you figure out what it is you have to do. Are there financial decisions you have to put into place so that in a year, in two years, in five years, you can quit and try something else? Are there things you could do on the side as a side hobby or side hustle to make additional money so that you can quit your job in a year? I hope to bring on inspiring people that will show you that they were in your position. They were fearful. A lot of times it's easy to look at other people once they're a success to say, oh, they started that really successful restaurant or they became a super successful photographer. Well, I don't have those skills. But those same people started in fear and in doubt and second guessing and thinking, what the hell am I doing? Why am I quitting my professional career and the stability to try this? And only now you can look at them and say, oh, of course. But if you push past that fear, then a really happy life can await you. And I would just 
you know, I don't know, my goal is to make one less miserable person in this world. And if I can do that, then it's a success. So hopefully you'll join me on it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to message me. You can find me mostly on Instagram at Lessons from a Quitter. Send me messages, ask me questions, tell me guests you want on the show. Of course, you can find all the information about the show and how to contact me on our website at LessonsFromAQuitter.com. Check out our resources. I will be updating that right now is, you know, the bare bones minimum, just some things that helped open my eyes and shift my perspective a little bit. I'm very excited about this journey and I hope that you will join me on it. Thank you for being here and I will see you on the first episode.